to the April 18th meeting of the Authority Board. Um, if you would please stand and join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So before us is the consent calendar. How about the minutes first? Oh, okay. That's a public comment. Okay. Uh, first off, does anyone have any changes to the minutes? If none, could I have a motion for approval? Move approval. Second. We got a first, second, and second B. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it passes. Mr. Chair, I would like to make a request before we start the meeting this evening to rearrange the agenda just a bit to move the closed session, which is item 9, to the end of the meeting. Uh, that That is acceptable for me. Any problems by any other member? Okay, we will we will do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the next item on our agenda is um, roll call. The, looks like we have a full board tonight. So let the record show that everyone's present. Next. Um, Public comments. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address the board on items that are on tonight's uh, that are not on tonight's agenda but falls within the purview of the board? Mr. Olson. Good evening, Chair Glover and board members. I am Bruce Olson, a resident of Pittsburgh, and I rode my bicycle to this meeting tonight. I would like to say that at the last meeting, my heart was warmed when several questions were asked during the commissioner comments portion of the meeting about bicycles on freeways. And our executive director, Randy, answered every question correctly. But he answered from the perspective of an administrator. I can add some end user perspective on that, if you'll indulge me. But first, I would like to say how lucky we are, not only this board, but the citizens of Contra Costa County to have Randy as our executive director. The stars aligned when we needed someone and Randy was available. So thank you, Randy. Is he in the room even? <laughs> Okay, Randy's not here. Too bad. He's off gallivanting It'll somewhere. It'll just go to his head anyway. <laughs> so Randy's answers were all correct. Uh, Caltrans has warrants to determine how far we can make the bicyclist go out of direction before the administrators say, oh, all right, go ahead, ride your bicycle on the shoulder. Randy didn't mention that 25% of all freeways in California allow bicycles. 25%, that's a gigantic amount. His illustration was the grapevine. Not going up the grapevine would require a lot of out-of-direction travel. That was a good illustration. I have, in fact, ridden my bicycle in both directions on the grapevine. Once was on the way home from a cross-country bicycle ride that started on the Atlantic coast and ended in San Diego, so I was northbound that time. And then a couple of years later, I was on my way back to San Diego to meet a few like-minded cyclists to embark on an around-the-world bicycle ride. And that was a great trip. 20 countries, 20 months, 20,000 miles. We didn't plan it like that. That's just the way it happened. So another question was asked, how do we know which segments of freeway allow bicycles and which segments of freeway don't? 
Well, that's a three-part answer. It's kind of complex. First, we have to define freeways. A freeway is divided, multi-lane, and limited access highway. Then we have to go to vehicle code 21960. Can I? Uh, you could finish up, Bruce. Another minute or so? Okay. Vehicle code. Go okay. ahead. Shorten it up. 21960 vehicle code says everyone is allowed on freeways unless there's a sign at every entrance saying what classes of vehicles are prohibited. And I think I can end it right there okay. because certain signs say we're allowed and certain signs say we're not. And thank you for thank putting you. up with me. Thank, thank you, Bruce. Bruce. Okay, our next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. I have no cards of anyone wanting to move an item from the public. Is there any commissioners or board members? Okay. Move approval. So there's a motion by Onrich, second by Pierce. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So tonight we have no major discussion items. Well, I'm sorry. Um, we will move. No major discussion items. We will move to the regular agenda. Items for the first item is the um, update on the authorities uh, series 2012A bonds. And this uh, information will be provided to us by Randy Carlson. Right, good evening, Chair Clever. My name is Randy Carlson. I'm Deputy Executive Director for the Authority. And uh, with me tonight is David Lieber to my right, and to his right is uh, Melissa Schick. Earlier on the agenda, uh, you approved a contract with Canaan uh, Public Finance uh, as our new financial advisor and uh, we were uh, we got right to work um, keep getting them uh, looking at having them look at one of our transactions that we're going to talk a little bit more about tonight uh, it's an informational item uh, we're looking at some strategies about <coughs> address this particular challenge that's, uh, that we're facing as a result of the tax reform act uh, we will be back uh, with a with a solid recommendation on uh, how to move forward um, this is largely an opportunity for the board to meet the uh, financial advisor and to hear a little bit about them and uh, some of the, the strategies we have in mind to bring forward. So with okay. that, I'd like to turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, my name is David Leifer. I am uh, with k and Public Finance, uh, the authority's new financial advisor. I'm joined by my colleague, Melissa Schick, and it's a pleasure to appear in front of you. Um, what I'd like to do is, before we uh, sort of introduce the issues around the bond program, just take a minute to introduce ourselves and our firm and uh, answer any questions you have, and then we'll jump into the, uh, a brief update. Um, our firm is what's known as a municipal advisory firm. Um, we are, that is, the, that is solely the work that we do, is advising public agencies on public finance related matters. Uh, we're entirely independent. We're not owned by a bank or any other type of entity which might present a potential conflict of interest with the independent objective advice that we're going to provide to you and that we provide to our clients. Um, that's really our role, is to provide you with information to support informed decision making. We have now, since you hired your last financial advisor, the regulatory environment has changed somewhat over the years under the Dodd-Frank uh, reform bill. And so now our little piece of the world is, is uh, heavily regulated. We have a fiduciary duty, uh, which means we need to put our clients' interests by law ahead of our own, which is entirely consistent, of course, with our role, which is to provide you with objective analysis. Uh, here at the bottom of this page, uh, just a listing of some of the other California transportation sales tax agencies that we work with. Most all of these also are sales tax revenue bond programs. Uh, many of your neighbors are here and many agencies, large and small. 
Um, moving on, just a little bit about myself. I, I, I manage the firm. It's a 20-person firm. Uh, we're based in Oakland. We have two offices in Southern California. I have uh, 30 years of experience, uh, five years as an attorney, and, and, and 25 years as a, a municipal finance advisor. Uh, and I'm, I'm the lead advisor with Melissa and, and one other, with most of the firm's transportation engagements. Uh, Melissa, why don't you just introduce yourself? That's probably the best way to do it. Uh, good evening. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Melissa Schick. I'm a director uh, with KNN Public Finance, also in the Oakland office. Uh, I've been with the firm for two two years now. Uh, prior to that, I served on the public finance investment banking side of the business, uh, and then prior to that, I worked for Alameda County. So I have a good mix of private sector, public sector, and, and now serving as a municipal advisor. Uh, I serve on uh, most of our client engagements with California transportation clients, um, and then perhaps most importantly, uh, the counties near and dear to my heart. Uh, I was born in Walnut Creek, and I was raised in Danville, so it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> exactly. Um, moving on to the next page, uh, next slide, just a snapshot of our firm. As I said, we're, we're considered one of the larger firms based in California. We have 20 employees, and uh, most of them are based uh, in Oakland, just a short drive away. And uh, I think the, the takeaway here is we have a lot of resources to bring to bear uh, on sort of whatever engagement or engagements you may need simultaneously um, as, as issues arise. And then finally, just a snapshot of our experience, you can see um, we, uh, we do a lot of deals and we work on a lot of different engagements and lots of different types of bonds and that means that we are frequently in the market and that currency of information is valuable. Um, we bring each, each experience to bear for the, next, uh, for the next client pricing and the next engagement and that's helpful. Um, many firms roll out their rankings. We, we, we certainly have ours as well. We were ranked second last year in the state of California just in the number of, uh, of the par amount of bonds that we worked on. And, uh, and as I said, we have a, a, a big transportation practice. So with that, the commercial is over. Uh, let's move on and talk a little bit about you and your uh, debt program. Melissa. Uh, sure. As Randy mentioned previously, uh, we've been fast at work uh, with regard to analyzing the authority's debt program. Uh, first and foremost on this slide is just an overview uh, of the authority's debt. Um, you have just over $700 million of outstanding sales tax revenue bonds consisting of four series. Um, each series highly rated on the AA plus category by Standard and Poor's and Fitch. Um, the, the bulk of your debt portfolio is fixed rate. Uh, and then a portion is variable rate with an associated swap, uh, interest rate swap, which we call synthetic fixed rate. Uh, and the final maturity of each uh, series is consistent with the term of the Measure J, J tax in 2034. Uh, what we're here tonight just to give an update on is the Authority Series 2012A bonds. These bonds are variable rate bonds uh, with the interest re being reset monthly uh, based on an underlying index, uh, in this case a LIBOR index, uh, plus a fixed credit spread. So this structure is known as a floating rate note. Uh, in December of 2015, the 2012A bonds were purchased by State Street Bank uh, with tab established terms set at that time. So currently, the interest rate terms are 70% of LIBOR plus 48 basis points, and that's how the interest on those bonds are established on a monthly basis. Uh, in December of 2020, something will uh, is a mandatory tender date which obligates the authority to do something. Uh, this evening uh, we'll, we'll discuss reasons why uh, the authority may consider relooking uh, at the bonds and finding alternatives for the structure uh, ahead of the 2020 date. And then as I mentioned previously, the, the bonds uh, are tied to an interest rate swap. So in addition to making the variable payment on the bonds, the authority receives a variable 
receipt from the swap counterparty as well as pays a fixed interest rate on the bonds. So there's the current challenge associated with these bonds that we're, we'd like to update you on is, um, pertains to the recently act um, enacted tax reform, uh, specifically the reduction in the corporate tax rate from 35% to 21% triggered a provision in the authorities agreement with State Street Bank uh, that increased the borrowing cost on the bonds by 20 over 20%. Effectively, as the corporate tax rate was reduced, the bank's earnings um, and value of the tax-exempt interest that they were receiving on the bonds thus declined. So there was a provision in the documents that increased the interest rate to make them whole. Uh, just in this table, you'll see uh, the authority's interest rate on the 2012 bonds before tax reform, so in December of 2017, and um, at that time, it was 1.43%. Subsequent to tax reform, just the interest rate on the bonds, short-term rates had increased, uh, moved up by 20 basis points to approximately 1.65%. But the trigger provision in the agreement with State, State Street Bank increase this rate of interest rate further to just under 2%. So um, the, the cost of this additional trigger uh, within the authority's interest rate uh, for the month of March was approximately $60,000, additional $60,000. So while well, there's no requirement for the authority to take action um, on the 2012A bonds until December of 2020, we do believe given the increased cost of interest on the bonds as a result of the tax reform um, that it, it's prudent to consider alternatives for the bonds. Um, and there's several alternatives that we're working with staff on um, and one is a, a variable rate demand bond, which is just a different form of variable rate debt. Um, and this would be, the interest rate would be reset weekly. It would require a remarketing agent, and it would be sold to investors in the public market. A second alternative would be to sell the 2012A bonds in the public market as floating rate notes. So the exact same structure as what the authority exists, currently has with State Street Bank, but rather than placing the floating rate notes directly with the purchaser, they would go out to the broader public market uh, and sell the notes um, to those investors. Another alternative would be to negotiate directly with State Street Bank. Um, they're a good partner. They've uh, provided additional proposals to staff with regard to the existing agreement and trying to get the cost of the facility, one, into either an alternative product or two, um, into a, a fee arrangement that's lower than the current arrangement uh, based on the trigger factor. And then finally, there's the alternative to terminate the swap, some or all of it, and issue just fixed rate bonds. Um, and this strategy is to one, reduce your variable rate exposure, um, and two, to reduce any, um, you know, risks associated, associated with the swap. So some of our preliminary observations in the analysis that we've been working with staff on is if uh, the authority were to maintain the existing structure on the 2012A bonds, a public market floating rate note structure uh, provides probably the most favorable variable rate alternative uh, to the authority. Uh, it presents the lowest interest cost alternative and then it also limits the bank exposures and some of the risks um, inherent in some of those agreements. Uh, and then also it's correlated well 
with the swap, uh, which is an important consideration in looking through alternatives for these bonds. On the interest rate swap side, any analysis that we're doing on the bonds, we have to take into account the swap. Um, and as mentioned earlier, we, we will be evaluating um, the possible opportunity to either terminate the swap in whole um, or partially. And this will be taken in consideration of the cost of doing so. Uh, the termination value on the swap right now uh, is significant, uh, but that being said, the tax-exempt borrowing rates right now are tremendously low, uh, and, but they're creeping up, and there's expectations for rates uh, to rise, and so it, we may be, uh, have an opportunity to capture the market in terms of where it is today. So next steps is continue to review alternative structures for uh, the 2012A bonds and to just really zero in on the effective alternative in terms of the borrowing costs. Uh, we, we'll be evaluating each opportunity in the context of the swap and the potential opportunity to terminate the swap. And then finally, it's our expectation to return to APC uh, with a recommended plan of finance uh, in June. Thank you for the update. Are there any commissioners wishing to have questions or comments? Yeah, the first thing that hit me is you're going to bring a plan to APC in June. And you were also talking about the rates are slowly creeping up. Uh, APC has a meeting before June. I, so, I mean, is there any way to put some urgency on this and say, look, this is essentially an outline of what we're seeing. This is what the history has been through January, February, March, April. And... You know, it may be, we've done it before, where you've got two meetings in May if things start popping up. I don't want to wait till you find something out to try and make a decision in August and not have a meeting. Mm -hmm. Good point. Any no, other? Sorry. Yeah, understood. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's an excellent point. Where, uh, we, I mean, generally we concur with the urgency. So we've, uh, Randy's gotten us started working even before we were, our contract's been approved. So. It's really, a, I think, a question of uh, crunching a lot of different numbers and analysis, particularly related to the swap option. And so we're moving ahead as quickly as we can, but to be ready, I think APC is the first week or the first, first, yeah, so it might, it just might not be feasible, but we can certainly, uh, uh, I mean, something that's yeah. Well, we, we did go to APC once already, so we've started the process, but. Point well taken, yeah. and we'll look at uh, a possibility of a second APC meeting in May. It really is dependent upon some of the analysis that we need to complete uh, in order to determine what is the most uh, desirable, favorable um, strategy to pursue. Okay. Commissioner Arwood. Uh, thank you, and, and again, welcome aboard. Um, really look um, forward to uh, – your advice, um, and as you said, you are free from owning anything we've done in the past, so you'll give us your honest appraisal. Um, and just to Commissioner uh, Hudson, we did uh, talk about what the urgency was and, you know, laid it out that if there's a point in time where um, something comes up and there's an opportunity that um, fits us for a long-term solution, that would not hesitate to call a meeting. Um, I just want to make sure out loud that uh, we look at the whole picture. Um, and the whole picture means that we don't have to keep putting up collateral of resources that we can't use that the taxpayers gave us where we put millions of dollars up to guarantee this when the swap gets too far out of alignment. We have to look at that loss. While somebody can say, well, it's still an okay investment, we're not in the investment business. We're in the, in, simply in the business. Um, if I owned it and you owned it personally, I could say, well, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not bad. It's not a bad. But – the reality is, is when we put millions of dollars up as collateral, we're not doing our job. So that's a real important analysis. So while when we got out of part of the swap, the $100 million before, that math worked out then. Um, so I hope you, uh, you know, give us that kind of a, a 
presentation as well. But thank you and welcome aboard. Point well thank taken. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ex officio member Keller. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I apologize. I got here late. And on the, the slide um, entitled Overview of the Authority's Debt Portfolio, uh, they're not on uh, page six. I'm sorry. It is numbered. Um, can you explain what that red number is? Sure. Sure, you could go to the picture. Um, right. So the 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 2012 A bonds has have three pieces. Uh, they have the the uh, CCTA uh, has a squiggly line going to bondholders, and there's a payment out the door, which is a variable interest payment made on the bonds to bondholders. Um, and then on the other side of the equation is the swap agreement. And so there's another payment going out the door that's just based on a fixed rate of interest, which is 3.6%. So both of those payments together are payments out the door, and those will be your, the black numbers uh, that you see. And together, they're your cost of borrowing. But that cost of borrowing is offset by a receipt from the, the swap counterparty, which is a variable receipt. Um, and in this case, it's a percentage of LIBOR plus 25 basis points. So the red number that you see in the table represents that variable receipt. Um, so your, the authority's total cost of borrowing under this structure is two payments out net of a variable receipt coming in to get to the 8.2 million. So you, you have to pardon me. I, uh, this is very complicated, and I'm sure yeah. the rest of you are much more informed about this than I am. But um, I got it. does um, <laughs> oh, then I'm, I don't have to ask any questions. <laughs> so does that? I mean, let me, let me put it in language that I think I can understand. Yeah. Does that represent two and a half million dollars less that the authority had to use for projects? That that represents actually well. It's the difference. Really. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's a the two and a half million is coming into the authority. So that's a, an increase. That's a, a, a offset to the payments going out. So, so the net is benefit. the net is fifty nine. Is that on the next page? The, on um, page 8, you, you show a, a post and pre. Yeah, so page 8 is, if we can go back, <laughs> is just the interest cost. The one leg is the payment to the bondholders. Mm. Um, and then there's the swap piece. If we go, maybe if we go to the outstanding bonds again where you see the negative red number, uh, you see the line that says the two 2012A bonds and the fiscal 18 debt service column, the 3.4 million. That's the interest rate that we're talking about on the bonds, and that cost has increased. In a perfect world, that number would exactly equal the middle row, which is your swap receipt. They would, but right now that number is that is a million higher. So in in some ways you're paying a million more annually right now on the variable side of the equation. So it's and a lost opportunity. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly. Oh, thank you. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> well, Commissioner Arridge. If, if I just may, if this was the reason why this sounds so complicated. Nobody does these today. These were valueless practically after the meltdown in the market in October of 2008. You couldn't sell these if you had to. Um, this was a hedging instrument that this agency, um, not unanimously, decided to do. Um, it's something public agencies should not be involved in. We all understand all the other notes. This team is here to help us figure out how to get out of this, make sure we don't have any lost opportunities, that that little payment is not the issue. It's the amount of money that sometimes you have to put up tens of millions of dollars as collateral. Yeah, you're an interest on it. On an investment, it looks okay, but we're not in the investment business. So that's our lost opportunity. So really look forward to your input. Okay. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Okay. 
Seeing none, once again, thank you for the report. Thank you. Okay. Um, there aren't any planning items this evening. There aren't any correspondence. And uh, the communications are attached as well as the associated committee reports. So. At this time, uh, comments from the chair. I want to present you all with the um, award that I was able to receive at the um, East Bay EDA, um, our Catalyst Award. So um, I'm not quite sure, but uh, uh, this is a very special award, though. <laughs> It was 3D printed. Yes, 3D. I think it it's was a 3D printer that printed this. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pass it around so you all can see. Um, it's pretty cool. Also, we were able to, um, and let me say that it was uh, a great experience to stand before such a great crowd of folks and innovators around the East Bay and receive this award on behalf of CCTA, so I thank you all for that opportunity to be able to receive the award. Um, along with that came um, the opportunity for representative from CCTA to go out and throw the first pitch at the A's game, which which was done yesterday. Yesterday. No. I didn't do it. Um, I, I, I thought it would be fitting for our executive director to go out uh, since he had. <laughs> you know, I'm sure he did a good job. I wasn't able to see that pitch. Did anyone catch it? No, they oh. didn't broadcast it. Oh, okay. I watched for an hour before. They didn't show it. <laughs> well, we'll have to get some footage of that and share it with everyone. I'm sure Rebecca took a video. But uh, he was able to go out and throw that first pitch and once again representing our um, great award for the innovation that we have going around uh, Gomenum. So once again, we continue to be acknowledged for that great work that uh, Randy has led the charge on. Um, any other commissioner's comments? Yes. Janet. I give a little report uh, for the AB 1234 uh, list, and um, I wanted to mention that I went to the Redefining Mobility Summit, um, and I, I think I had an experience that only I would, you would not hear this from anyone else except me, but um, I was totally enamored. Um, thank you very much, Dave. Um, with how I got there, because it was so easy. It was absolutely, fantastically easy. Um, and um, I uh, did receive a little bit of help from CCTA staff uh, when trying to figure out how to do it. But once I found out how to do it, I found out that there's a bus about every 10 minutes from here um, to go out there. And um, not only that, it went directly from over across the street at the uh, transit center to the building it was in. So I, I just like didn't have to think any further. And I think that's the way we all want transit to work. So I just wanted to commend those responsible for um, making it possible to do that and um, say that I also had a really uh, informative experience at the um, Mobility Summit. I especially enjoyed hearing um, discussions about whether or, or not um, it's a good idea to do the driverless car. Um, there seem to be a lot of um, opportunities these days for people to provide their comments on that topic, and so it's it's an evolving situation, I think. But the thing that it, I appreciated more than anything was this, um, what this chart represents, which is 10-minute service. Mm -hmm. um, 
to a uh, job center, especially. So, thank you, Dave, and and all. And you can tell me who else is responsible. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> they both have the same name, Alex Merritt. Yeah. He's been doing it for thirty years, thirty-five. Paying okay. the bus service. Great. Hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars annually. Okay. Any other uh, commissioners? I, I do want to refer to. Mayor, uh, but we had a very exciting day today, Tom, with Mayor of Richmond. Uh, hopefully you want to report on that. Well, we threw a switch on uh, MC's 10.5 megawatt uh, solar project in Richmond. It was a joint project of Chevron and MCE in the city of Richmond, and it, they tell me it's the largest public solar project, at least in the Bay Area. And uh, uh, Federal and I both made uh, great speeches, and <laughs> we were we were roundly applauded. We represented uh, our our uh, constituents well. And I would say that uh, Mr. Tatson also serves on the MCE board, uh, so we were uh, well represented. This commission. Any other commissioners? Any ex officio members? Staff? No? Nothing. Okay. Okay. So at this time, as I say, we have uh, the attachments are before you with the activities. Um, we will now go into a closed session. No, nope. we, change nope. we oh, changed oh, that. Right. Oh, that's right. We're going to go to item 4A. I'm sorry. Uh, at the request of uh, Commission Peers, we will now go to item 4A. This uh, is an informational item. Uh, and so Tim will be presenting this. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Glover. Uh, my name is Tim Hale, a Deputy Executive Director for Projects, and based on the feedback received at the Authority's March Board meeting and subsequent uh, Administration Project Committee meetings, uh, we really felt the need to have a detailed overview of Gomentum Station Incorporated um, to provide an overview of the organization, the financials, the bylaws, and the growth plan. So Gomentum Station Incorporated is a nonprofit public benefit corporation and is a separate entity from the Authority. And Habib Shamsku is here from Gomentum Station Incorporated. He is the Chief Financial Officer um, of Gomentum Station Incorporated and will provide the overview. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Glover and Commissioners. My name is Habib Shamsku and I'm the Program Director of the Gomentum Station Program. This evening, I'm providing you with an overview of the Gomentum Station Incorporated, a California nonprofit corporation, its organizational structure, financial, bylaws, current status, its growth plan, and future outlook. Today, I am speaking to you as the CFO and officer of the Gomentum Station Incorporated. During this presentation and follow-up discussion and question and answer, when I say we, I mean Gomentum Station Incorporated. First, allow me to give you some historical background. On September 24, 2015, Gomentum Station Incorporated was formed in California as a nonprofit public benefit corporation with 5013C status to allow for our automotive and technology partners sign non-disclosure agreement with us to protect their information that authority couldn't do to the, uh, could, uh, could not do due to CPRA. As always, Gomentum Station, it's uh, incorporated. Focus remains on job creation, efficient mobility, safe transportation, and greater environment in line with authority goals and vision. On September 13, 2015, Gomentum Station received its employment identification number from IRS, and on April 11, 2016, we received our tax exempt status from IRS, effective September 24, 2015. 
In the same year, on July 20th, 2016, we received exempt acknowledgement from Franchise Tax Board. In a little over two and a half years, CCTA and Gomentum Station Incorporated joint program has gained national and international attention and status as, as one of the premier testing facility have, having one of the most comprehensive connected autonomous vehicle program in the world. Gomentum Station has signed over 30 MOUs and agreement in the last 30 months including collaborative agreement with eight international partners. You may know about a few, a few of them, not all of them. They include Honda, CAFCO of Canada, ITE, Allstate Insurance, EasyMile, LTA of Singapore, Auto Truck, and now Uber, Baidu, BestSmile, ITS Australia, Fresh Transit, Netherlands, ITS New Zealand, ITS Japan, Toyota Research Institute, SEI or uh, Sumitomo, uh, SAIC USA of China, AAA, uh, Best Mile, Japan Ministry of Economic Trade and Industry, Lyft, Luminar Technology, LAFTA, and uh, as of last week, Intel. There are a number of other uh, uh, pending as VSP. Over 160 entities have approached us to join Gomentum Station program. And we, are, we have had over 1,000 visitors from across the globe in the last 30 months. Each of these requests and tours require a staff time. The latest delegation of the 12 high-level officials from Brazil visited Gomentum Station just yesterday, and 34 people from New Zealand two weeks ago. Gomentum Station program is more than just testing vehicles at the Concord Naval Weapon Station. One of our notable projects is the deployment of the shared autonomous vehicle at the Bishop Branch. Assembly Member Susan Bonito in initiated the request for state funding and later Assembly Member Grayson finalized the deal securing state funding for Gomentum Station program. The funding requires an equal match in order to spend those dollars for Gomentum Station program. The Bay Area Air Quality District funds wouldn't have been possible without Gomentum Station program, which brought the first SAV to North America. Now let me tell you about a few of some of our financial highlights. In fiscal year 2015, Gomentum Station Incorporated had no income rep uh, to report. As a result, we filed Easy Form 990. In fiscal year 2016, Gomentum Station had over $750,000 revenue and almost $450,000 in expenses, and we finished the year with almost $300,000 in cash. The major source of the revenue was contribution by Honda, Auto Truck, and the Sunset Development. A major source of expenses was paying for the site improvements, including constructing the test facility, new gates on Velo Pass Road in Concord, paying for operation and maintenance and improvement within the Concord Naval uh, Weapon Station, and supports the SAV project at the Bishop Branch. In fiscal year 2017, Gomentum Station Incorporated had close to $900,000 revenue and $418,000 in expenses, and we finished the year with $488,000 in the bank. The major source of the revenue was, again, contribution by partners, including new partners we signed, and major source of expenses was similar to fiscal year 2016. Gomentum Station is up to date with all state and federal filing and requirement and timely filing of, the, of our 990 tax return in the past two years. Future growth plan. The, Gomentum, uh, the growth of the Gomentum Station Incorporated looks great and we are seeing an increase in the revenue for fiscal year 2018 and expected to be five-fold. However, this picture indicates that we, we will need more support to manage the program. My estimate is that the program will require at least six FTEs, and only we have a half a time person currently. This doesn't consider future demand and requires an ongoing need for funding. 
Please keep this in mind when you review the letter of interest in your packet and potential $50 million investment by AAA in the Gomentum Station Innovation Program. Gomentum Station Incorporated developed 15 years master plan concept to build a testing facility to meet the needs of our partner projected to cost $250 million. Now a few words about the corporate organizational structure. Gomentum, is, uh, Gomentum currently has one contract employee that works 20 hours per week. She is our on-site operation manager. We hired her in mid-2017 to reduce the burden on CCTA's staff. We just hired a, a second part-time employee to assist with day-to-day -day management about a week ago. We have outside corporate counsel. His name is David McRae, and he is present tonight in the audience. David we also have an accountant. The previous mentioned staff are all contract employee. Gomentum Station has no payroll employee, and as of today, we manage the, the program with the contributed hours partly paid uh, by my previous employer, averaging about 30 hours per week, and partly by authority staff and a few consultants that all, that all are paid by Gomentum Station Incorporated. This model is no longer sustainable. As CFO of the Gomentum Station, I drafted, negotiated, and signed all MOUs and agreements that are fi financially binding. None of the authority staff were involved in any negotiations or financial agreement associated with Gomentum Station Incorporated. Thus far, including all negotiation with the AAA's interest in the potential transfer of the asset of the Gomentum Station Incorporated. The authority has been the key to Gomentum Station growth and success, and from day one has been an integral and important partner. The relationship will continue because of the agency's shared goals and mission. Together, we have made a commitment to address mobility and safety in Contra Costa County first and foremost by utilizing the latest technology in connected and autonomous vehicle field. The authority has been acting as the spokesperson for the program, and it has been a very successful collaboration. In fact, in November 2016, the authority approved MOU 99.00.01 with Gomentum Station Incorporated to clarify the authority and Gomentum interest, commitments, relationship, roles, and responsibility in collaborating and supporting our shared interests and vision. Now a few words about the Gomentum Station Corporate Governance and Bylaws. We drafted the Gomentum Station Corporate Bylaws with the general purpose and objective of advancing transportation, mobility, and safety worldwide and building a connected and autonomous vehicle program at Gomentum Station in Contra Costa County. We envision a place where the convergence, innovation, and commercialization of the connected vehicle application and autonomous vehicle technology technologies come together in a test facility and research center for transportation safety and improved mobility. An additional purpose of this cooperation is to publicize and accelerate the state of practice in advanced technology. We first drafted the corporate bylaw in early 2016 in compliance with the state authority and have since drafted an update with assistance from our corporate council. We attempted to form our full board meet last year, and we identified and talked to following individual with the high credential in corporate governance. Mr. Alex Mehran, the chairman and CEO of the Sunset Development. Mr. Austin Hills, the CEO of the several corporations, including the Hills Exploration Incorporated. Mr. Rich Sawe, the former president and CEO of the DKS Associate with over 30 years of managing a traffic and transportation engineering firm in Bay Area. Uh, Mr. Mark Tammy Huta, former CEO of the Transportation Research Center in Ohio with most experience in this business. We send a complete board package to all four with the hope of the having three of them accept to form the board. Three out of four verbally accepted with the reservation that the organization was still too young and financials didn't justify their time and effort at this time. 
We are hoping that with the projected revenue in 2016, we will be able to form our board this year. When that, but when that time comes, if appropriate, we will also be extending an invitation to CCTA to sit on the board. Please note that the Gomentum Station incorporated uh, updated bylaws are still in draft stage, subject to approval by future board members. Future outlook. The future path of the Gomentum Station Incorporated is very bright and the authority is in a good place to reap the benefits of this in a meaningful way. Contra Costa County will no doubt be the epicenter of the redefining mobility. Our close proximity to, to over 200 entities with research center in Silicon Valley and over 10,000 researchers, scientists, and technologists have placed us in the high demand. We respectfully request that you consider the bright future ahead, of, ahead for both of us, which will be made possible by the large investment that AAA intends to make in this program. We are confident that the authority will remain as the key partner in this success, uh, successful endeavor. At this time, we are just informing you that we are moving forward to explore the opportunity provided by the letter of intent by AAA. Thank you for your attention, and I would be happy to answer any question that you may have. Thank you. Uh, first off, I want to turn it back to Tim if you have any comments or question prior to taking question. No, no comments at this time. Okay, so thank you for the presentation, board members. Um, Board Member Hudson. Yeah, Habib, you said three out of the four responded. Yeah. The fourth one wouldn't have to be from San Ramon, was he? Uh, Mr. Uh, no. The, okay. The, the, uh, no, actually, he, the, he he said he's the one that he said is too young for that at this time. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, given all the choices of entities, for profit, nonprofit, LLCs, LLP, um, uh, S corporations, whatever. How did you choose and why did you choose a nonprofit corporation? We chose a nonprofit uh, uh, corporation at the get go with the consultation with the authority. We had three choices building a consortium like the Automated Highway System Consortium going JPA, like the JPA that we have on toll roads or so, and uh, going uh, direction of the nonprofit entity. We determined that our potential partners that are interested to test at our facility, they are most interested with the uh, nonprofit entity. Thank you. Um, Habib, uh, first of all, thank you. And just on that last one, the reason why they were interested is because all of the people are testing want their information to be secret, and it couldn't be in the public hands because then public records request. So that's the reason why the corporation was that's set correct. up as a nonprofit, so people couldn't make that. So otherwise, the non-disclosure agreements would vaporize. So it was a way to protect intellectual property. Um, but I just want to say thank you, Habib. You. Uh, you stepped up when our agency didn't have the, the ability to do this. You took a personal risk, a very personal risk. You wrote the original check out of your own pocket to make this happen. And you've held it together um, to a level that, truthfully, a lot of people up here probably didn't know how it was being done. But it became an internationally well-known organization. It has a bright future. And um, I think, as we'll hear in some of the next documents and some of the meetings that um, Dave Trotter, chair of APC, and us as the subcommittee got to see um, some pretty exciting things. But I think we owe you a debt of thanks um, to do this personally. I don't know that I could have done that. And, um, you know, it's, it, it was a big favor you did. And really just want to say thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And it was my honor. Okay. No other questions or comments at this time? Nope. Okay. Good. Thank you. We will now go to our next item on the agenda, um, which is mm -hmm. 
the future of Gomenum Station. And Tim will present this item. Good evening, Chair and Board Members. Really appreciate the opportunity to present tonight. And based on the feedback from the March uh, Authority Board meeting and subsequent APC meetings, I'm going to be, be providing a detailed overview of Gomentum Station. And so, and this presentation is long, I wanted to warn you. Um, so please sit back, get comfortable, and enjoy. I'll just comment, we asked for it to be in-depth at the APC meeting. So it's it's been long in coming, but we're looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> so the authority's redefinability innovation program started with the TDM and 501 program and also the intelligent transportation systems or ITS program. So through the 511 program, the authority has an initiated pilot such as scoop and driver miles. So the ITS program also funded and supported ramp metering such as the 80 Smart Corridor and partnerships with universities such as UC Berkeley to discuss, to uh, research integrated dynamic traffic operations or connection protection. So authority staff initiated the CVAV program in 2014 to foster research and innovation in the field of connected and autonomous vehicle technologies. And the authority CVAV program is an integral part of the Redefined Mobility program to enhance safety, mobility, and economic vitality in Contra Costa. So the Redefined Mobility program has now grown to include connected communities and advanced mobility. Through these programs, the city of Oakley was the first to announce to be a smart city in Contra Costa, and Innovate 680 was developed to solve congestion on 680 corridor. Gomentum Station started with the request from Supervisor Bonilla to create smart jobs in Contra Costa. So if you could just picture this for a minute. Randy was Iwasaki, went to the Concord Naval Weapon Station, stood on top of the bluff, and he said, this is probably the best place to test autonomous vehicles, if not in the, in the nation. And so with the world moving towards autonomous vehicles, it seemed like a natural fit to offer the Concord Naval Weapon Station as a facility to manufacture and testing. Congress had the space and a forward-thinking staff and city council, and CCTA had the vision. When Mercedes agreed to test, it was a big victory for both our agencies, which was our very first partner. CCTA recognized the power of having access to this kind of research and testing and be able to accommodate certain requests at the testing facility and essentially gives our agency the ability to peer into the crystal ball of the future of mobility. But we quickly realized that as a staff, there were not, they were not resourced to handle the attention and new responsibilities that came to operating a test bed. Partners were requesting non-disclosure agreements and CCTA could not enter into those agreements. And this was a challenge with partners due to their proprietary technologies and we could not protect them. CCTA could not accept any user fees or revenues for testing. And to support the program, CCTA would ha have to hire additional people. In partnership with CCTA, Gomentum Station Incorporated was created as a nonprofit organization to address these challenges in order to continue the program. For the program, these goals and visions have always been foundational from day one and are essential to developing the agreements and forming the partnerships that we, see, that we form today. So I want to provide an overview of the test facility at the Concord Naval Weapon Station. As I mentioned, obtain, we, uh, the authority obtained a sub-license from the City of Concord Master License to attest a Thomas vehicle at Concord Naval Weapon Station. So in July 2015, the authority and City of Concord and City of Concord Local Reuse Authority entered into a memorandum of understanding to support and implement and manage autonomous vehicle testing at the Concord Naval Weapon Station in conformance with the sub-license. Through the sub-license, testing occurs in three primary areas at the Concord Naval Weapon Station, Bunker City, Kenny Boulevard, and Mini City. So the Bunker City is highlighted in blue, the Mini City is highlighted in green, and you can see a black uh, highlighted yellow, highlighted road in the middle, and that's Kenny Boulevard. And those are the three primary areas that testing occurs today. 
The City of Concord is currently planning the reuse of the Concord Naval Weapons Station and will provide a master plan for a variety of uses. Once the base realignment and closure or BRAC process is complete, the property at the Concord Naval Weapons Station will be transferred to the City, the County, and East Bay Regional Park District. You will see Mount Diablo Creek running south to north through the middle of the base and SR4 west to east at the top of the slide. The property east of Mount Diablo Creek and south of SR4 highlighted in beige, also noted as conservation space, will be transferred to the East Bay Regional Park District. The area highlighted in blue north of SR4 and noted as First Responder Training Center will be transferred to the county. The remaining property will be tra transferred to the city for the reuse plan. The reuse plan is divided into districts and will be phased. The first phase is highlighted gray on this slide. So how does the BRAC process in reuse plan affect autonomous vehicle testing? Bunker City will transfer to the city and will continue testing until this area will be redeveloped as part of the reuse plan. The mini city will be transferred to the county and could be potentially the site of the permanent testing facility. Once the BRAC process is complete, the sublicense from the City of Concord and Navy will no longer be required and testing operations will be through agreements with the city and the county. So what is the timing of the phased implementation? The BRAC process and specific plan approval is targeted to be approved in 2019 and phase one of the reuse plan is scheduled to begin in 2020 with grading utilities and roadway improvements. Vertical construction is anticipated to be completed by 2030. Phase two is anticipated to be from 2030 to 2040, and phase three is beyond 2040. After the BRAC process, interim use would potentially continue during phase one until 2030 or until this area is ready to be redeveloped as part of the reuse plan. The mini city would potentially be used as a permanent site for testing collaboration, but in the meantime, for the next year or so until the BRAC process is complete, will continue to use it as interim use with the City of Concord. So Gomentum Station is more than just a testing facility at the Concord Naval's Weapon Station. It is a program. And Gomentum Station has been uh, uh, using a program to support innovation and te advanced technology to achieve our goals of enhanced mobility and safety. So as discussed today, Gomentum Station Incorporated is a non-public uh, benefit corporation and is a separate entity from, entity from the authority. And Gomentum Station Incorporated owns the program and testing partnerships. Gomentum Station is more than just testing autonomous vehicles at Concord Naval Weapons Station. The testing at Concord Naval Weapons Station only makes up for 20% of the overall program, and the program reaches far beyond the Concord Naval Weapons Station to advance these technologies, research, enhance mobility, and safety. So what is the program that Gomentum Station owns? A program is a plan of actions to achieve a goal. And Gomentum Station Incorporated is responsible for implementation of the program and meeting the needs of the testing partners. Gomentum Station Incorporated can deploy their own projects to advance connected autonomous vehicles, Technologies are also responsible for research and testing at the Concord Naval Weapons Station. CCTA and Gomentum Station Incorporated have been partners from the beginning, and we want to explain how this partnership works. So you may have seen this slide before, but I'll go through it one more time. The U.S. Navy owns the Concord Naval Weapons Station in the city of Concord. And the city of Concord has a master, light for the, master license for the entire property in the city and the, with, to schedule and sub-license access to Concord Naval's for the purpose of testing autonomous vehicles. The authority holds a sub-license with the city of Concord to access the Concord Naval Weapons Station for autonomous vehicle testing. And as mentioned, the authority, city of Concord, and Concord Local Reuse Authority have an MOU to define the roles and responsibilities relative to managing and operating autonomous vehicle testing at the Concord Naval Weapons Station. This MOU is being updated to provide access to the Concord Naval Weapons Station for an additional five years and increase the number of testing partners, and this MOU will be brought to the authority for, for approval at a future board meeting. In November 2016, the authority approved 90, MOU 99.00.01, 
with Gomentum Station Incorporated establish the roles and responsibilities to support the Gomentum Station program and testbed operations at Concord Naval's Weapons Station. So based on the MOU, how does CCTA and the City of Concord support the Gomentum Station Incorporated program? So through MOU 9900.01, authority staff currently provide support to Gomentum Station Incorporated for managing some of the day-to-day -day operations of the testbed, including scheduling of the partner testing, coordination with the City of Concord, facilitating tours at Concord Naval Weapons Station. Authority staff also currently provide support to Gomentum Station Incorporated for marketing, outreach, and media coordination for testing demonstrations, partner announcements, and pilot demonstration projects. Critical to our role, we're responsible for maintaining the sublicense with the City of Concord to maintain access at Concord Naval Weapons Stations for the program. Gomentum Station Incorporated has primarily facilitated and managed the partnerships at Gomentum Station for testing, research, and CV applications, and they're responsible for day-to-day -day operations, including maintenance of the facilities, scheduling, and tours. So through our MOU with the City of Concord, the City of Concord supports the program by providing staff to facilitate scheduling, coordination with the Navy, and monitoring the performance based on the sub-license with the authority. So through this partnership, Gomentum Station, the City of Concord, CCTA, has really grown into a nationally recognized leader and connected autonomous vehicle testing. In January 2017, Gomentum Station was designated as one of 10 autonomous vehicle proving grounds in the nation. Similarly, Gomentum Station is also an international entity and has a global presence. And we've achieved significant accomplishments together through the years. In July 2016, we launched the first notable shared autonomous vehicle program in North America. In September 2016, we obtained the first of its kind legislation to test level four autonomous vehicles. In May 2017, we started SAV demonstrations at Bishop Ranch. In July 2017, we received three and a half million dollar allocation from the state budget. And in March 2018, we started testing the SAV on public roads at Bishop Ranch. So through our success and partnership, the program has grown exponentially to the point where the framework of the partnership is not meeting the needs of the partners and needs additional resources. The vision of the program is to build a testing facility to be the preeminent global authority and facility for autonomous vehicle testing and safety. The testing facility will be a beacon worldwide providing a source of new high-tech jobs in Contra Costa and economic growth. The vision includes facilities for testing, research, development, smart cities, and developing a campus for innovation. The partners continue to request for improvements at the Concord Naval Weapons Station to support operational scenarios to advance their technologies. To facilitate these requests, the test facilities need to be expanded to include roadway improvements, wireless communication devices, storage facilities, charging stations, and these improvements require a significant investment into the testing facility at the Concord Naval Weapons Station. Meanwhile, other autonomous vehicle proving grounds are sharing the same vision and obtaining significant investments in both state and private funds. The Gomentum Station program is in the front and one of the few proving grounds actively testing. However, this may not be the case without additional investments into the program and testing facility at Concord Naval Weapons Station. So to continue and support the Gomentum Station program and achieve the vision as well as meet the needs of the partners, there's been an ongoing need for significant funding. And based on the growth of the Gomentum Station program and global recognition, the American Automobile Association of Northern California has expressed interest in acquiring Gomentum Station Incorporated. The authority received a letter of intent, which is attached to your packet, on the, based on the due diligence process with AAA and Gomentum Station Incorporated. On April 5th, 2018, the Administration and Projects Committee formed a subcommittee to discuss the letter of intent with AAA. Commissioner Trotter and Arnrich were appointed to the Gomentum Station Subcommittee. And on April 10th, 2018, which was just last week, the subcommittee and myself met with AAA to discuss the letter of intent. AAA shared the framework of the transaction and integration of Gomentum Station Incorporated assets into AAA, including contracts and agreements and AAA aspires to an investment goal of $50 million over the next five years. The subcommittee expressed the authority's interest in the Gomentum Station program, including economic growth and creation of smart jobs in Contra Costa, 
leveraging Gomentum Station for autonomous vehicle applications in Contra Costa, and the continued growth of testing facilities at Concord Naval Weapons Station. AAA shared similar interests and agreed their goals and interests align with the authorities. At the meeting, the subcommittee and AAA discussed future operations and the roles of the authority to continue to support the Gomentum Station program, and the authority will continue to maintain its sublicense agreement with the City of Concord, which provides access to the Concord Naval Weapons Station. AAA is committed to having CCTA to be an important stakeholder and will participate in testing, demonstrations, and operations at the Concord Naval Weapons Station, including responsibilities for public agency co co coordination, obtaining agency approvals and pe permits, designing construction of site enhancements and demonstration projects, facilitating deployment of demonstration projects, and administration of state and federal funding. AAA will be responsible for management, partnerships, planning and coordination, operations and maintenance, testing, marketing, and outreach of the Gomentum Station program. So after completion of the BRAC process, the Navy will no longer be involved in the Conquer Naval Weapons Station. The master license and sub-license will no longer be required to access the Conquer Naval Weapons Station for autonomous vehicle testing. As we discussed, after the BRAC process is complete, the mini-city area will be transferred to the county, requiring a new MOU. The MOU will be separate from the City of Concord MOU and will establish a framework to, for continued testing at the mini-city, and the county MOU will be brought to the authority for approval at a future board meeting. The MOU with Gomentum Station Incorporated is being updated into a master cooperative agreement to prepare for state and federal funding and realign the roles and responsibilities to manage the program and operations at Concord Navy Weapon Stations and to meet the needs of the partners. The master cooperative agreement will be brought to the authority for approval at a future board meeting. If the AAA traction goes through, the master cooperative agreement would be transferred to AAA subject to authority board approval. The Master Cooperative Agreement provides the ability to transfer funds between Gomentum Station Incorporated and the authority. In the future, the authority may continue to receive state and federal funds for autonomous vehicle testing. Gomentum Station Incorporated will also continue to receive private funds for autonomous vehicle testing. And so through the Master Cooperative Agreement, the authority and Gomentum Station will be able to leverage private and public funds through the Master Cooperative Agreement. However, based on the grant funding that was received last year and potentially future funds, the $3.5 million requires a non-state fund match dollar for dollar. So without the private funds, the authority will not be able to access the $3.5 million to support the Gomentum Station program. The Master Cooperative Agreement also establishes the framework for allocation of funds, reporting, auditing, and procurements to be consistent with state and federal funds. Gomentum Station Incorporated will, be, will request the funds. The authority will approve and request the resolution with the authority board. Subject to authority approval, the request will be submitted to the agency administering the funds, and once approved, the funds will be transferred to Gomentum Station Incorporated. Through the agreement, quarterly reporting, including supporting documentation based on the type of funds received, will be required and submitted to the authority, and authority staff will perform regular audits in conformance to any regulations associated with state and federal funds. So here's the exciting part. The authority has continued to leverage Gomentum Station to achieve our goals to enhance mobility and leverage technology to solve congestion because we all know that we will not be able to build our way out of congestion. So how and why are we doing this? The program all started from a request from Supervisor Bonilla to create smart jobs. And through partnerships and continued focus on the vision, we can continue to leverage Gomentum Station to enhance economic growth and vitality in Contra Costa. Gomentum Station has enabled CCTA to have a seat at the table to the most cutting edge technology. We have deployed these technologies in Richmond, Pittsburgh, and throughout the county, and CCTA brought the first shared autonomous vehicle technology to North America with the Easy Mile Shuttle to solve our first and last mile problem. Through these technologies, CCTA has been benefited from national and international recognition. And this recognition provides us access to international experts such as the Mobility of Service panel that you saw at the Redefine Mobility Summit. And through the Redefine Mobility program, Gomentum Station Incorporated has supported our most innovative projects, such as Innovate 680. 
So all the partners are focused on many of the same goals. For CCTA, we're focused on leveraging the technology to enhance mobility and preparing for tomorrow's transportation system. City of Concord is focused on economic growth and making their city the most advanced smart city in the nation. The county is focused on economic growth and creating smart jobs in Contra Costa County. And Gomentum Station Incorporated is focused on research and accelerating this technology to prepare for the future and enhance safety. The reason why Gomentum Station is so successful and is growing into a national and international entity is because of the strong partnership due to the common goals that we all share in this program. And there will always be continued benefits. The benefits of the program tie back to our overarching goals, improving mobility, safety, creating jobs, helping to improve the environment. And while we're doing it, Contra Costa is gaining national and international recognition. The board may take an action on this item tonight, and the staff is seeking direction to support and acknowledge the letter of intent from AAA. And thank you for listening to this very long presentation and ready to take any questions. But before I do that, um, I'd like to see if the Gomentum Station subcommittee would like to make any comments. I, I would just add, uh, first of all, that's the best presentation I've ever seen. You, you hit a home run on that, and I think to all of us sitting here, you summed it up, um, and you got us to where we are. Um, um, I'll, I'm going to let Dave talk about um, um, the AAA portion. He's the lawyer and kind of helped get us on the right track. But the bottom line takeaway I had was they are only interested if we're their partner, um, and they solidified that. Dave kind of tweaked that agreement, um, but they want it. And by the way, we... I always thought they were headquartered in San Francisco. I know they have a building here. That is AAA's headquarter right there. That's, that's, they want to be here. They want to be partners with the city of um, uh, Concord and particularly with the county. This, is, this was the dream I think we were hoping for. So, um, Tim? Yeah, uh, thank you, Newell. Um, and also I want to say, Tim, it would be great if you could share that electronically with the uh, members. Yes. I think it would be good to have... Um, and maybe even post on the website. Um, no, I thought our I thought our dialogue with uh, AAA and their their management team for this project went very smoothly. One one aspect of it um, that I think is important is that you know we want to keep our hand in at, at uh, the Concord Weapon Naval Station. We want to be the holder and to control the sub license for the foreseeable future, uh, and um, that. Uh, that was not a problem for AAA, and now it's going to be part of our arrangement. Very important. Um, and we made a few other tweaks. The other interesting thing was uh, there was a dialogue about um, the fact that um, uh, when, I guess, uh, Gomenum gets wound up, there has to be some distribution to other charitable entities to, that is equivalent to the value of the assets being acquired. And the question was asked, well, is the CCTA a possible beneficiary donee of that? And we have some information from our uh, attorney that, in fact, with some minor tweaks, the answer is yes. Um, and we're talking about potentially, I guess there's a, a target number of about, was it $900,000? Yeah. Um, seems to me that given the investment that CCTA has made in helping Gomenum to get up and running, that we are the, again, in, in my line of work, when, when somebody is the logical recipient from a trust or a state um, of, a, of a, you know, a gift, um, it seems to me that we ought to be pushing very hard to be able to make sure that, that we get paid back in some form or fashion for the opportunity that has been created here for AAA to come in and take over, as long as they have to give that money to somebody. It might as well be the CCTA if we can work that out. And, and that's all I'm going to say for now. We'll have more to talk about uh, in, other, in other forms. Uh, thank you. Could I just add one, one more little thing to amplify, Dave? Certainly. Is, um, what was, the other thing that was really clear is um, they can't do this without us um, being a partner as long as GoMedim is around. Um, but just to be clear, legally they have to go from a nonprofit 
to a not-for-profit because that's the entity they are. But it, it, it still gives the protection for all the participants and all the companies for the non-disclosure agreements that nobody can sneak in and steal that intellectual property. Um, we will be just like um, what we do for cities and our own projects. We, our staff will be hired to actually uh, or, or reimbursed for us building the assets and managing them, opportunity to do a demonstration center building, uh, almost like a museum type thing, and hopefully the partnership that they're talking about and Habib and others of seeing a university, the School of Engineering, is interested in opening that in Concord. Um, so um, we're headed the right direction. Yeah, and, and there was a nice slide there. It was maybe 15 slides back that show the new framework, and it's the things that remain on the CCTA side of that ledger where we build value for whoever ends up being the owner of the Gomenum Station enterprise. And if it is, in fact, turns out to be AAA, they want us and we can provide expertise and, and you know, apply for and obtain other federal and state grant funding and that that you know makes this a very a very nice way to continue to keep our hand in and continue to do good work here in Contra Costa County. Commissioner Pierce. Yes, and I want to thank um, all of you, Habib, especially for taking the first step of getting this wonderful venture off the ground and Tim for guiding us through this great presentation. You know, Newell and Dave um, volunteered to be the subcommittee from APC. As you know, at our last meeting, some of us raised some pretty grave concerns about this was maybe going too fast and we didn't have enough answers and assurance. And we're afraid we, we might be losing something here. And they have actually had a really good conversation and nailed down that uh, rather than losing something, we have a lot to gain. And while Tim said this is an informational item and we have an option to do something, I think it would be in CCTA's best interest to indicate in whatever form uh, Mala and Tim think most appropriate for us to send a message <coughs> back to AAA that we really appreciate this opportunity to be a partner and that we would like to pursue that. Um, I don't know that we have any formal action tonight, but I think being able to express that publicly and let them know that we are in agreement and want to go forward that way uh, under whatever vehicle we need to develop is probably a really good move on our part, especially since this shows all the possibilities of being an incredibly beneficial liaison for CCTA. Thank you for those uh, comments. Let me just ask a question of our attorney. This is not agendized as an action item, yes, but it is. It okay. Has potential okay, action. potential action. So, uh, just to be clear, we can uh, move forward with that item tonight. Let me just say that on behalf of Contra Costa County, this is a, a dream come through in terms of what our vision has been for job and economic growth within the county as a whole. And as you know, the Northern Waterfront initiative that has been kicked off, this falls right into um, the, the worth of um, really building that um, Northern Waterfront initiative to its best. And I think that, that we really should be applauding the B for the great work that he has um, brought here to um, Contra Costa County, City of Concord, uh, along with Randy. They, they've worked very hard together and it has bro brought a proven great product to uh, the City of Concord, uh, Contra Costa as a whole, uh, and making this a reality. So I think we definitely want to be in the game. We definitely want to move forward with this item because um, we're, you don't get this too often. This has fell up into our hands. National and international recognition, um, it, it'll never happen again. So we really want to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, so I would, uh, I'd be ready to, to move on this item. I know we have other speakers before that takes place. Uh, Kevin or Dave? Yeah, I do, I do have a question about that. Um, 
that what does that what does that uh, what does that motion look like? Um, and I, I think, you know, the question the question I have, and maybe you can pose it both to the to the, the the other commissioners here as well as to Mala, is, you know, what how how specific does that direction have to be, and and what kind of conditions do we want to place on this? Okay. For example, you know, making clear that that what we're talking about here is is the the realignment of responsibilities that is being suggested, the retention of the sub-license, and the request or insistence, whatever word you have, okay. that the majority of that potential reallocation of those assets go to a nonprofit entity, i.e. the CCTA, as a condition of our blessing of this transaction. I'd like to hear what Mala or others have to say about that. The rest of it, I think, is pretty straightforward. Okay, th let's uh, do that. I see Carlin standing. Did you? Yeah, I'd like to make public comment. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Carlin Obringer, Vice Mayor of the City of Concord. I just would like to say on behalf of the city, I'm thrilled to hear this conversation tonight. And I also just wanted to clarify a few things that were presented during the presentation. In, in regards to phase one of the Naval Weapons Station, I think the impression was given that that was definitely going to be the development area and that still is very much under discussion. So I wanted to clarify that for everyone that that is not set in stone. I also wanted to share too, that my colleagues and I are very much in support of GoMentum Station continuing on into perpetuity. I know that there was some discussion about when it goes away. Um, and someday it, we might not need the testing track in the same way that it's being discussed right now, but we really are working very hard to establish that institution of higher learning. And in fact, we put out a request for proposal to find a consulting team to help us get started with the visioning process. And uh, I'm chairing an ad hoc committee along with uh, Council Member Ron Leone to start interviewing some of those consultants next week. So um, we see all of this moving forward together in the future so that we have, you know, um, hopefully we can establish some kind of polytechnic engineering uh, institution of higher learning that I think would be well aligned with what we're uh, talking about tonight with GoMentum. So I just wanted to express my um, extreme support for this and just share a little bit more about what's going on uh, with the city of Concord. And there is a commitment uh, by the Concord City Council to, to find a permanent home on the Naval Weapons Station for GoMentum Station. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Um, Mala. Oh, it's on. Great. Um, the action I think we're seeking is before you on the board, which is direction to support and acknowledge the letter of intent from AAA. However, I do want to make clear that um, in future discussions, we've been talking about the cooperative agreement, and that is between the authority and Gomentum Station. And at some point, should that be assigned to AAA, that will require more formal approval of the authority. And that is not what is being asked of you tonight. So I do want to make that clear. And to the extent you do want to convey to AAA the interest in potentially modifying the Articles of Incorporation and the bylaws of Gomentum Station to convey that eight hundred dollars to nine hundred thousand dollars that might be an appropriate time to do it, but it could it could happen going forward. You mean it could happen that we could convey that this evening and then give direction to staff to work with Gomentum Station prior to any transfer? to modify either the, the articles or the bylaws to accommodate that? Correct. And that could, that could happen, that direction could happen tonight as well? Correct. Okay. I bet I, okay. Um, thank you, Tim and Habib, for, for your presentations. Uh, as I read the staff report, there was lots of weeds I was wading through uh, and trying to chop down, trying to figure out exactly where all the relationships were at. This presentations helped clarify a whole lot of that. I think this is, we are moving in, in the right directions. Thank you, Newell and Dave, for your efforts and your work on, on, on working with AAA. Appreciate all that. I would almost like to say I'll take Julie's motion with Dave's concerns and wrap them all together and second Julie's, mo Julie's with, motion with, with, Dave's with Dave's amendments to Julie's motion and, and, and move and forward from there. Yes, yes. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Bob's concerns. So I would uh, first like uh, for us to clear the motion up. As to what it was, so Julia, if you could. Well, that goes to my question. Can I ask okay. my question? All right. 
Mala, are we on item 4.8.15.2? Correct. Okay, we're on that. So we still have another item to go. Right. And my question is, and I support Julie and Dave and everybody else here, is that going, you said in a, to publicly announce it, but are we going to be more formal and do a letter of response to their letter of intent? Is exactly. that the, that's the that intention? That would be the action. We would give direction to staff, just to clarify what I guess is now the motion, would be to give direction to staff to prepare a letter, send a letter to AAA indicating our discussion this evening, our support for going forward with this partnership, and include the comments that Dave just made as, as part of that discussion. And I would suggest that um, the subcommittee that we appointed from uh, APC probably mm -hmm. be part of conveying that message back um, and, and continue that relationship, I think, would be really appropriate so that that personal conveyance is there as well as just the staff letter. So, um, you may. And make some comments. Absolutely. Yes. I'd like to second that motion and make some comments. First, um, uh, and I have a question. Uh, that letter of intent in response to some feedback that the subcommittee gave to AAA has undergone some change, but I'm not sure that we've actually, have we seen it in its revised form, blessed by staff and ready for approval? Is it, is it, is it all done yet? I'm not sure that it is. No, there's there has been a letter drafted, so I think we're seeking direction to draft the letter yeah. with all of these, well, with all of these items in it, and then we'll we'll get approval of that letter. Um, maybe we'll, maybe we'll I we'll maybe print. I misspoke. Uh, have we we have a we've seen a document entitled Principles of Agreement. I think what we're talking about is the letter of intent that is in the right. packet, yeah, which okay. is just expressing AAA's intent to right. acquire Gomentum Station. All right. Um, so with that understanding and, and subject to, I think, the subcommittee continuing to weigh in here with feedback on that letter, I support the motion. And I, I don't have anything else to say aside from my previous comments about what I think that letter should say. Okay. okay. And so we'll go to Commissioner Taylor. Okay. Followed I get, by our... I guess, and this will probably go to you. It, tonight, if we, as we are doing this, this, this is kind of a momentous occasion. Um, and I guess the question I'm going to ask, we have three identities now, Go, Momentum, CCTA, and 3A. So once this hits the airwaves and there are going to be a ton of questions, who does what, who goes where, who's going to be responsible so, so we all put out the same info? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what I'm kind of, I, I know it all goes to staff, but we are not 3A staff, and I don't know if we're momentum sta staff. That's part of our responsibility. Well, we do that, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're part of marketing. Wait a minute, Bob, okay. so you got it answered, right? Yeah. Well, the, the, so the answer to your question, yeah. Commissioner Taylor, is that we will, we will, once we get to seek approval and we send the letter off and we support and acknowledge the letter of intent, um, we'll coordinate with all three entities in terms of the best way to message this. Mm -hmm. it, that's the key. I, I, know, I know we're going to send it to staff. I know all about that. But we it, need to make sure that we all are going to be saying the same thing. It should same, be a joint same, press release. It should be a joint press release. Okay. Um, Commissioner... You, are you finished? Um, okay. Yeah, Go I ahead. just wanted to add one thing that, that we didn't say, um, and I think it's an important to note why, why AAA versus somebody else. Um, we actually need a neutral party, and you'll see some of the other testing facilities, insurance companies are doing it. First of all, no vehicle shall be on a public road without it being insured. The insurance industry needs to figure out how to see how are these cars created, interface with the designers and stuff to say, yes, we can ensure that we can't do that, um, versus picking one of the big companies who um, might be building an autonomous vehicle. They wouldn't want anybody else. 
So having AAA, they want exactly what we want, everybody on the planet to come here to test, do it in an open field, which um, if we had any of those other individual um, companies, we would lose that. So uh, that is really probably one of the reasons why. And I think that's why you're seeing some of the other ones. There's probably going to be three in the United States with insurance companies. Commissioner Trotter. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Federal. Why don't you go to Commissioner Butt? Commissioner Butt. Uh, well, first of all, I want to commend you, Tim, and whoever else worked with you on this presentation. Um, I guess I'm a little slow, but I've had a hard time understanding all the relationships of the parties involved in this, and um, this really pulled it together really well, and I appreciate that. Um, this thing still has a lot of moving parts. And I think there's a little bit of a leap of faith that it's all going to come together and everybody's going to be on the same page. And, and I hope they are. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's a little daunting. Um, and uh, I, we, we hope for the best. But thank you for clarifying really what's going on. I've, I've really had a hard time assimilating this. And I think I finally got it. Thank you. Commissioner Mitchell. Um, a follow up. Uh, I know this is the American Automobile Association. I always call it 3A, but anyway. Do we know, are they partnering with some of those other, those other nine sites, or are they only coming to Gomentum? I don't know the answer to the question, but Habib Shamsku, do you know the answer to that question? Yes. We do have a relationship with other nine sites as we speak. In fact, I'm in charge of writing the MOU between the Gumentum Station and nine other sites that is going to float around. The AAA, partly they are involved in Michigan, but we are dealing with the AAA of the North America, uh, Northern California at this moment. Their intention is to expand it to a national level and as well as international level. They have 300 million member worldwide, 55 in the United, 55 million only in America. But by acquiring the asset of the Gomentum Station, they want to expand this program uh, nationally and internationally. Am I understanding you to say that the other nine areas in the United States are going to be part of Gomentum? No, we have a collaborative agreement. I we see. are meeting monthly right now. The latest meeting took place at, the, at okay. here in this office. I right just here. know it's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay, seeing no other. Uh, Commissioner Hudson? No, I, I know Joel wants to get no, out. I'll just ahead. make it quick. I think Newell touched on something. Uh, I can't repeat it enough. A month ago, I was at a mobility summit in Chicago. There were two days of meetings. The meetings went about an hour, asked questions. Um, Department of Transportation and a person along with three people from the insurance in one meeting. By far the most notable meeting that everyone wanted to go to and couldn't fit in the room was insurance. And But a year or so ago, shared bike was something that we couldn't find a company that was reliable. At that same mobility summit, 15 different companies vying for your business. So whatever is going to happen is going to come fast. So I don't have a vote on this, but I, if this were coming to a board where I did have a vote, um, I, I would wonder why you're doing a sole source procurement with one company. Um, how did you arrive at $50 million? Is that the right number? Is that what the marketplace will support? Why, why wouldn't you do a request for qualifications from the entire industry to see if this is indeed competitive? It's not a there's, there's no... There's, there's, well, you can't, you don't have to approve it. You don't have to approve it without a request for qualifications from others to, to ensure that you're doing the best, entering into the best fiscal agreement possible. $50 million is a lot of money by any stretch of the imagination. But is it the right amount of money? Is there anybody in this room that can say someone out there isn't willing to put $100 million into this? And the way, to, the way to prove that is to go into the marketplace, solicit proposals, and if this is the best proposal, you can then say 
the mark that this is a market rate that's that's supportable. This seems so um, unsupportable because there's no evidence that I've heard. Great presentation, great work by SAP. I am very much supportive of Gomentum. I have been in the past and continue to to, to be a supporter. But this seems, um, if I had a vote, I, I couldn't support this because there isn't enough knowledge that would satisfy me that this is the right market price for this uh, for this proposal. Well, I, I guess we can go to Momentum for that uh, information. Abhi, would you? Yes, this is not the, the first entity that approached us, and this is not the first entity that we have done a lot of due diligence. For last year and a half so, we have been uh, entities, they have approached us, like the Transportation Research Center in Ohio, like the European partners, they, they love to build the uh, oval, uh, uh, oval space for the testing that uh, to acquire Gomentum, none of them, their goals and objectives match with the goal and objective of the authority and the uh, uh, Gomentum station incorporated in advancing uh, mobility and safety. They were all for their own entity benefit and financial. So we are not in here for financial gain. Uh, and. Uh, and by the way, those that are, they have approached us in order to acquire the asset of the Gomentum station, the number didn't uh, exceed more than $10 million. Okay, so I think there has been research that's been done uh, as we have moved forward. Uh, Commissioner Howard. Yeah, I just want to correct the record um, that I think what was said um, is just not factually correct. Um, one, um, CCTA and the public have no financial interest in Gomentum. We don't own it. We didn't form it. We didn't start it. And we're not making a decision to sell it. We're actually here just in an advisory role because we have a license which any entity could pick up and go do testing any place they want. Um, it's actually personally owned by Habib. Nothing to do with us. Um, let's be clear. What we're looking for is to find a partner that they are interested in that actually wants to work with us. And so this is an advisory role. They're not paying anything. They're not paying $50 million. They're not paying, they've committed $250 million of capital assets, and they will run instead of Habib personally running this organization. And in terms of the assets, that's just by law. You can't buy a charitable entity. Whatever the actual value of it is there has to be then contributed to a designated so we're not buying it. We're not recommending to sell it. We're not recommending anything. We are just looking at the intent that AAA wants to form a partnership with us. So we don't have financial supervisory uh, role in this. We don't have a financial interest in this. We are just a partner on paper. And that's only by the fact is, is they'd like to work with us. And that's all that we're recommending. They have, we looked for a partner. Habib brought us a partner who said, I'd like to work with CCTA. Habib could pick this up and go to another state tomorrow. It doesn't have anything to do with us. So that just want to make sure we're clear on that. We're not selling anything. So we're I, getting I normally wouldn't respond, but it, it, there was a comment that there were facts that were incorrect. Um, if, this, if, we, if this agency has no authority over this momentum, why are you entering into this agreement at all? Just as I said, which is just an advisory role. So you ha you do have authority over them. We do not. So if you deny this this request, can they sign an agreement with with uh, um, Gomentum? They can AAA. Yes. They could yes. they could buy. Don't they could they could bypass the authority. And they don't bypass us. We don't have a legal tie. It's not. So our they answer. can't bypass the authority. So I am factually no, correct. No, they can bypass us. They, Period. They, they can't – well, no, you can't have it both ways. They can't uh, – you can't – I'm not – this has got nothing – there's pride involved. Excuse me. We're, 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 we're not going to – Well, wait, do, but I, uh, I mean, Mr. Chairman, I, you know I respect you and I respect the authority. But I, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting here is there is – you're entering into an agreement over which you do have some discretion, over which you do have some ability to direct. 
and you're going forward without <clears throat> testing them. I, I, I understand there have been other proposals. I understand other people who have, have made comments about those proposals, and I understand and respect that very much. But no one has gone out in the marketplace, not CCTA or Gomenum, and said, would you like to partner with Gomenum and be part of this collaborative with CCTA? That would be a matter of issuing these doc, issuing a document, tested marketplace, and maybe the only thing you get back is a $50 million offer from CCTA. But then we can all say that marketplace was tested and $50 million is the right number. Nobody can say that today. Okay. Commissioner Trotter? Just quickly, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, uh, it is true that Gomenum Station can make its own deal with AAA. The reason why we're involved, I think, is very, very simple, and that is that we're in the process of restructuring our relationship with the current Gomenum station and uh, in a way which, it, which allows it to move forward in, a, in, in, the, in the correct direction um, uh, and do the things that we, it just can't currently do because of the way things are structured. I think what's going on here is that we're going to enter into that agreement with Gomentum and AAA has expressed an interest in then acquiring Gomentum. They would, slip, they would step into Gomentum's shoes and they would become our cooperative agreement partner. I think that's what, uh, what you know, right. uh, Newell was trying to say, and I'm persuaded by what Habib said, which is he went out to try to figure out what he could get from the marketplace for Gomentum and found that they were making the best offer, and I'm, I'm willing to accept that representation. That's all I want to say on that subject. I have a Commissioner Bates, I'll get, I'll get to you next. I've yeah. been had my on. I'm <laughs> sorry. What, why don't you go ahead? Okay. I have a question that goes back, way back in the conversation. Okay. And that was about um, the status of AAA. Um, my family is a member of AAA, the, the travel club, I'll call it. And we're also a member. We get our auto insurance there. So there are two things. I was just wondering which one this one is. Which, which, which entity? Of AAA has got two programs, traveler services and insurance. But separate from them, in their headquarters, they have the innovation program, and this is going to be part of their innovation program, more associated with the travel services, although the insurance is very important to them. Are, yeah. are you, and you're sure that it's one, it's two companies? Uh, I'm, I don't know about their corporate structure, okay. whether it's a two company or one company. I don't know if anybody from AAA is here tonight to answer that, but so, I know that uh, their business is traveler services, which is more important than the insurance to them. They are the entity that actually help to pass the uh, uh, seatbelt uh, in this country 60, 70 years ago. So they are. I'm very just wondering about the um, legal stat status of the two parts because I've been told that they are separate companies uh, previously. But then I have another question. This is for, I guess, our attorney. So if one has, um, as I do, a, a financial arrangement with AAA via those two vehicles, in my case, no can I even uh, vote on something like this? Is that okay? Yes, it would be okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Commissioner Bates. Um, I, 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 I just want, I wanted to address uh, uh, a couple of Joel's comments because – I, I have some of the same misgivings, but but I think it goes to my remark before that that this has a lot of moving parts. Um, I'm convinced there's no downside for CCTA to get involved in this. On the other hand, um, CCA, CCTA do, does not have a does not really have a, a, a tangible asset, you know to put out the bid or to advertise for. What 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 all this revolves around, CCTA has a has a sub license with the city of Concord that can be terminated in thirty days. And the city of Concord has a license with the Navy that can be terminated in thirty days. And it's it's things like this, it's it's some very on paper, some very tenuous things, you know, that hold all this together. And, and I, I don't think we're really in a position to go out and say, you know, here we have a 30-day sub-license. Would anybody like to come in and buy it from us, you know? 
Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of good faith uh, from all these parties, and it just so happens that it's it's coming together very nicely. But it's it's very tenuous, and I, I think that um, it's it's a great opportunity with virtually no downside. That's kind of my take on it. Thank you. Any other comments? There's a motion before us. Before we go to the vote, let me just thank all the partners that's been involved, and that's what it is. It's been a true partnership all along, and um, we thank you, B, for bringing this to us. Um, I want to thank the subcommittees, uh, our APC and the subcommittees, who went out and did the uh, the heavy lifting in terms of bringing back good information, doing a good job on analyzing what our risk was and bringing us back something that I think deserves the uh, moving forward with the tentative agreement um, as the motion makes today. So thank you all for your for all the work and effort that's gone behind this. And, and, Mr. Chairman, before we vote, I just want to thank you for your comments. I want to thank Dave Hudson for whipping the APC so hard <laughs> and insisting that we spend most of the last month working on your, you know, schedule. It was great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. With that, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. It passes. This is a great day for CCTA, great day for Contra Costa, Great day for the city of Concord. Great day. For Gold Momentum. For Gold Momentum Station. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's that next slide? Oh. Weather? Mr. Chair, I, th uh, I think I heard in Tim's presentation that the master cooperative agreement is still in, in the works, and we're not going to do that tonight. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that is correct. That item is not ready, and we plan to bring that in a future board meeting for approval. Okay, so okay. the next item is to go into, go into closed, closed session. session. So we adjourn to closed session. And read the statement. And